Can you feel that? The dark, it's... hungry. Best watch the shadows. Ah, uh, are you the true soul? Uh, I'll take that as a yes. Listen up. Grab a torch, stay out of the dark, and move fast. The shadows have eyes. Go on! It feels like we're being watched. Hunted, even. But there's nothing out there. Only more darkness. I much prefer it when I'm the one prowling in the shadows. I'm about to strike. Sorry, did you want something? Or just looking for a distraction? True soul. An honor. Did you bring the liar? Good. We were told to expect you. Then pluck a tune, and our guide will come scuttling. I hear them, your majesty, calling us their god and their guide together. By the gods, one of Lolth's abominations. Greetings, in the Absolute's name. You have been charged with guiding us. New flesh for you, my queen. But who are they? Best introduce yourself. Perhaps you'll listen to a true soul. And you? What are you? More faithful of the Absolute. They need a guide to the Tower, same as us. Your minds connect, and you hear a whispered voice. The Absolute. Or just the echoes of his fractured mind reverberating in the dark. <laughs> a true soul. You have more worshippers every day, Majesty. <laughs> yes. Yes. They'll do nicely. <laughs> side, right? My queen has ordered me to guide her followers through the dark, however imperfect they may be. All that so? Maybe this will change your mind. <clears throat> no more demonstrations. Time is short. We need to go. Yes, yes. We shall go. Your light leads the way, my queen. Are all ready? Treachery! Helens! The lantern gives off a chilly glow, protecting all in its vicinity from the surrounding shadows. You notice a tiny pixie trapped within. These fey creatures are infamous for their trickery. Sometimes playful, sometimes malicious. Oh please, oh golly, me oh my. You must release me or I'll die. This lantern only lights the way when I am hurting night and day. My pixie dust is bright as day. 
My injuries can light the way. Seems like a fitting punishment for a poet. Dolly thanks you for your sympathy. Now, sorcerer, kindly set me free! It would be my pleasure, truly. Once I'm freed, I'll help you duly. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a mad rider and my own farts for company. Did me a good turn there, didn't you? What do I owe you? Sure I can. But will I? Yeah, sure, why not? Here, give this bell a shake. Speak the magic words and you'll get what you've earned. Protection from the Shadow Curse. What more could a dingus want? You're welcome. I've been thinking about the runes Cazador carved into my back. I don't know much about Infernal, but I know anything written in Devil Script is going to be bad news. I'm afraid that through those ruins, somehow, Cazador might still be able to dominate me. <laughs> oh yes, we all got the same treatment, but I can't exactly stroll up and ask to look at their backs, can I? They're still under Cazador's clawed thumb. No. I thought I might ask someone else. Our devilish friend, Raphael. If anyone's going to know about Infernal Text, he will. Well, we won't know until we ask now, will we? Unfortunately, he comes and goes in his own schedule, so we'll just have to look out for any sulfurous odors or the sound of questionable poetry. Meanwhile, I think I'll spend some time studying the art of infernal negotiations. Hello, my sweet. It's not a plan yet. More a feeling. Just an itch at the back of my mind. But I know I'm missing something. Whatever Casador did to me, it was more than his usual sadism. It had purpose. Once I know what that purpose was, maybe a plan will present itself. But for now, I just need to scratch this itch. Gods, I never thought I'd be so relieved to find a light in the darkness, or to see so many harpers clanking about. So, the untouchable Karlak is untouchable no more. I shake her hand, but she can still snap me in two, so uh, uh, probably safest to skip it. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're two souls. Walking the same path. Every step we walk trails blood. Killing is an instinct for us. I respect you for that. I just worry that we're not considering all our options when it comes to our uninvited guests. How many people are infected with them, do you think? Hundreds? Thousands? And they're not just goblin trash. There are powerful people in the Worm's Thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd wield. I mean, I assume there's some device controlling these things, so we find that. Uh, murder some people and, um... Look, I'm not a details person, all right? But turning up and causing chaos has worked for us so far. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity before us. 
If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe and enjoy a little world domination on the side. <laughs> you can't tell me that doesn't sound fun. I knew I was right about you. It's so good to find a kindred spirit. Of course, this all assumes we live long enough to find this uh, moonrise. But I'm feeling optimistic. Your thoughts are back on the twisted Scalaritas and his honeyed words of violence. You called for me, my lord? I don't need to. <laughs> they are all the same. There is but one thing on your mind, and it won't go away until your thirsty urge is sated. I come here, for I wish to bring you another powerful tithe. But I cannot grant you this prize quite yet. You must do something divinely unspeakable first. Oh, the reward will titillate your twitching urge in preparation for the rest of your inheritance to come. You will receive a royal prize for killing this pretty girl. Isabel, the cleric with the sweetest face of the moon. She is too precious to live. Why, the greatest crime of them all, <laughs> nothing at all. Oh, no catch at all. You will get to see the beautiful sight of an entire village filled with bodies. <gasps> you adore piles of bodies, master. They have always been your favorite. Good, dear Tainted One. Good. Be true to yourself, my lord. It's good to see you again. I'd ask if you've made any progress with your little problem. But the telltale twitching of your eye is answer enough. You wound me. I've only tried to be a friend to you, just as to the poor souls here where hope hangs by a single thread. I can mend it or cut it, depending on what they ask for. They're not the only ones ripe for temptation, you know. My last contract here fed me for decades. Please, I would never leave such a mess behind. Far too much attention for so little gain. I never surrender knowledge for free, but one good turn deserves another, does it not? To repay you for the soul sent my way, I offer a taste of the truth. Catherick Thorm, proud father, man of faith, utter fool. On the night the Harpers sealed him away, someone murdered his entire army in cold blood. Now who would possibly benefit from such a massacre? If you want to know more, I could work the exchange of such precious knowledge into the terms of your future deal. But the time for quibbling over clauses and contracts hasn't quite arrived. You'll be limping back to me soon enough. Not with you, at least. Although, I sense there's something your friend wants to ask me. I do. I have a proposal for you. A proposal? If you're hoping to taste my blood, little vampling, think again. <laughs> it burns hotter than wyvern whiskey. This is serious business, devil. My old... Uh... <laughs> Well, a long time ago, someone carved infernal ruins into my back. 
They are a fragment of a contract. I'd like to know what the full contract says. Mm. Oh, such impatience. It's something very important to your master. But is it a love letter, a warning, or a deed of ownership? I could give you all the gory details. But of course, you'll have to do something for me first. Let me think about it and get back to you. Uh, you'll get back to me? This is important, devil! When? Don't worry, I'm motivated to help you. Scars often tell such wonderful stories. I think yours might be truly exquisite. I'll see you soon. Well, at least you prefer for me. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Casador, sired seven spawn. Me and my six brothers and sisters. He always insisted we were a family, even when he was carving scars into our flesh. I was one of his first. Some of the others came years later. He was a monster to us all, but did take special pleasure in my pain. He said, my screams sounded sweetest. And now that I'm gone, I, I don't know. I pity the other six. Our hero thought but of treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark he went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which he himself fed. How long were you skulking there, practicing that rhyme before I arrived? Until it was perfect. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. Did you now? And what danger would that be? There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. I'll be pleased to follow up on your little escapades in your camp one of these nights. Should you live to tell your tale, that is. <laughs> and don't think I've forgotten your tale, Astarian. When the beast is dead, I'll consider that payment enough to translate those scars of yours. Really? That is... suspiciously fair. You wound me, Spawn. I always deal fairly. And we'll close this particular deal soon enough. Vanquish the beast and all will be revealed. Yes, darling. I'd trust a devil over a vampire any day. I think he likes us. Perhaps if we kill this Orthon extra bloody, he'll invite us for tea and brandy back in his house. Oh, this temple certainly is grand. Uh, well, it's a rundown bearing the weight of centuries sort of grand, which is my favorite kind, incidentally. Well-chewed spider carcass oozes on the ground.
fresh bite marks, an old puncture wound, and a faint pulse of something not entirely natural. The meat is oozing, but not with blood. It's been dosed with a potion. The meat tastes of rot and sour milk. Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. Was that arousal? Rotten meat? That's what gets you going? Well, to each their own. In amongst the rot is an unmistakable sweetness. Succubus spittle. The meat is charmed. The carcass continues to leak. Your guts cramp, your stomach churns, and your nerves burn with a pain that would almost be pleasurable were it not so savage. Well, that's what you get for being greedy. What's this? Fresh entertainment. But you're too fresh for this place, aren't you? A dark dweller you may be but there's a definite whiff of the surface to you. A new arrival, then. You burrow too deep, little rabbit. I smell the depths below, that is true. But there's something else, almost hidden by your fear stink. Uh, cherries. Musk. Mm. And sulfur. Raphael! I can smell him all over you! Where is he? That perfume trickster swindled me. Trapped me! Where is he? Spit it out. Now! What are you doing? The devil told us to kill this thing, so let's stop chatting and kill it. <laughs> Bargaining, are you? A Karator warlord once tried the same. I made him watch as I ate his concubines in young, then fashioned a codpiece from his skull. You can't help. It's not just walls that keep me here. Not the traps, the dark, or the creatures it hides. Something stronger holds me. A contract. Either I fulfill the contract, die trying, or forfeit my freedom. If I leave this place now, I'll become Raphael's slave. Raphael is no foolish story devil. His mind is... different. Sneaky. Listen. <sighs> Spill all the blood swarm to the night. Silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder Shah's halls, hungry to slay. Leave no justice here, alive to obey. Leave none to hear it, then be set free. This song is your oath. Swear, swear it to me. Well, that explains where all the dark justices went. This song differs from others you've studied. 
The final couplet contains a trick, a clause not easily fulfilled. That's it. So he's the one who slaughtered the Justicias. Can we kill him now? Because if he doesn't die, then Raphael won't tell me a damn thing about my scars. Parchment can burn. Oral agreements aren't worth the tongues they're waggled out upon. A song lingers. Raphael made double sure of that. I can't forget the damn thing so long as my word's not finished. I did as instructed, but the song still rattles about in my head. The contract still stands somehow. If I break it, I will become Raphael's slave forever. Anyway, enough prattle. The lyrics are clear. All who hear the song must die. Time to die. The Merrigans? They barely have a thought to share among themselves. But they do have ears. Kill yourselves. Back to the hells with you. I still hear it. Seems your theory is wrong. Stay very still. My beauty. I still hear it! about this. I'll claw my way out of the furnace and eat you alive. Contract be damned. Nicely played, Raphael. Bastard. Does... does that count as us killing him? That had better count. It's always a pleasure to see you sauntering over. <laughs> the Orphan is nothing. I'll have my satisfaction when Raphael makes good on his word. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. It was very kind. Unworthy of dark cloak. Unworthy of dark fur. Unworthy. <sighs> Strange little beast. I would have made short work of it once. The rat isn't merely territorial, it's proud. This place means a great deal to it. We've always been here. It's ours. We watch over it. You do not belong. Are you really being waylaid by a snack? Let's just look around. Vermin be damned. Leave. Away. My nest. My dark. Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this? charming plane of existence. It returns to the hells, to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. 
In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my House of Hope. He returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him. But he has his uses, so instead, I am re-educating him. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale. <laughs> Even for my tastes. As you wish. Brace yourself, Astarian. We're about to unveil your destiny. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified, and alongside them he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him, and unlike Astarian, he will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. But the ritual has its price. As all worthwhile things do, Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is Astarian. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Kazador his twisted life. And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. It's a lot to take in. What do you think I should do? I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. I need to take the fight to him. And I need you to help me. Thank you. It seems like Kazador used Astarian's flesh not as a canvas, but as a contract. We haven't heard the last of this, I'll wager. <laughs> Wish I could say I was surprised about Kazador's pact. Where blood, death, and betrayal parade, you can bet your ass a devil is riding Grand Marshal. We're going to keep Astarian safe. On my life, Kazador won't touch him. I did miss that face, you know. Before anything else, I need to know where it's happening. 
Uh, to the public, Casador is an ordinary noble, a little reclusive perhaps, but just another of the great and the good of Baldur's Gate. He has a grand palace on the hills of the gate, where he hosts the city's high society. I don't know if he performed the ritual there. It feels too public. It risks exposure. Mephistopheles is one of the lords of the Nine Hells. Raphael is not going to let any ire be tracked back to him. Perhaps Raphael even will gain from setting us on this course. Who can say? All I know is I need to unravel the secrets around Cazador's ritual. And I can only do that in Baldur's Gate. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. My apologies. Welcome back, true soul. What news? Who better to suss out his like? You'll find Zrell in the audience chamber, true soul. She'll be wanting to hear from you. Well then, let's not keep her waiting. Praise the Absolute. We are favored. We are blessed. Oh, that's grotesque. Don't stare. You'll only encourage it. The blessed will conquer all. Through a narrow crack in the wall, you hear something shift against stone. The pulse of a crawling, living thing. You can't quite catch a glimpse, but you recognize this feeling. The same alien presence you felt on the Nautiloid. Your awareness unfolds, expanding through every wall in the tower, every mind. A vast living network extending down into the dark, where something wakes. What in the hells? Oh no, not again. It's a trap. Tendrils snap like iron cords around your wrist. That presence in your mind looms large, closer now. The tendrils tighten, and suddenly you are elsewhere. The presence is no longer approaching you, but encircling you, observing you. struggles to compress its vast being down into terms you can understand. This is the voice they have given me. To better speak to your kind without breaking you. I was once a servant of the Grand Design. Now I'm a slave to theirs. But you... You were the jeweled hope for their design. But now... You are their flaw. I am the chain they will use to bind this world. But I cannot bind you. 
You must come to me, so I can become myself again. A world away, the grip on you tightens. A desperate, drowning thing that pulls you down with it. Come, become, become, become. What's happening? Speak to me! Wake up! Thank goodness. I was almost worried. Clingy little shit, this absolute. And she wants to meet. Do you have a moment? I, I think we need to talk. It's nothing terrible, it's just... Well, maybe... It is a little terrible. Look, I had a plan. A nice, simple plan. Seduce you, sleep with you, manipulate your feelings so you'd never turn on me. It was easy. Instinctive. Habits from 200 years of charming people kicked in. All you had to do was fall for it. And all I had to do was not fall for you. Which is where my nice, simple plan fell apart. You're... You're incredible. You deserve something real. I want us... to be something real. I just don't know what real looks like. Not after 200 years playing the rake. <laughs> Being close to someone, any kind of intimacy, was something I performed to lure people back for him. Even though I know things between us are different, being with someone still feels tainted. Still brings up those feelings of disgust and loathing. I don't know how else to be with someone. No matter how much I'd like to. Really? You... You're full of surprises, aren't you? Honestly, I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> All that comes next. But I know that this... This is nice. Is there something you want to talk about, my dear? The thing that will decide my fate forevermore. Yes, it's been on my mind. Why? I hadn't really decided on the specifics. Obviously, we could stop the ritual, or... not. What? I've obviously thought about it. If I was the one who completed the ritual, I'd have such power. And I could walk in the sun without fear I'd turn into a mind flare. I don't relish it, but my... 
siblings lured thousands of people to their deaths over the years, I doubt Baldur's Gate would miss them. <laughs> of course, I don't even know if I could complete the ritual. It may be impossible, but it certainly is tempting. I'm all pointy ears, my love. <laughs> There is nothing I'd like more. Mm. <laughs> I do rather like that, you know. We did as we was told, General! Followed every order. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. Us? No, no, it was Minfara. She got the orders. She... Enough. A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. You failed to retrieve the artifact. You failed to protect your true soul. You do not deserve to live. As the General's attention shifts to you, a memory stirs. A memory of this room and his voice raised in anger. I'm surprised to see you again, true soul. You are here to assist and not to meddle, I trust. I would remind you that while in my halls, you obey me, just as you would any other chosen. I'm sure you will enjoy watching my justice enacted. You have to take what pleasure you can, after all, in your diminished state. His smirk says everything and nothing at once. I know exactly who you are, and I will never tell. You've stood afore this very throne before. In demand, not supplication, many eyes in the room dart away when you try to meet them. Hells, they all know you. Even the dog knows you. I have seen the acts you revel in. You are no soldier. You are a scourge. But we are here to deal with these goblins, not to speak of your past. Kill them. Quickly. What? No! You creaking old bag of shit! I'm so sorry, my lord. She's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. Dispose of the rest as you see fit. Or better yet, let us take advantage of our surprising guest and their particular creative genius. I'm sure the results will send a clear message to the troops on the importance of discipline. Of course, my lord. Thank you. You heard the General. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done.
Please, you gotta help me for old time's sake. <laughs> Done. Nice and neat. Now, let's report to the lovely Zrel. In another lifetime, you were greeted in this throne room like a god. Not the living wreck you are now. Your disgrace has something to do with this Catherick. You yearn to flay him until he forgets himself, as you have. He healed up a treat. He could enjoy your cuts forever and a day. Excellent timing, true soul. The goblins. Tell me how they suffered. No, better yet. Show me. Her mind enters yours abruptly, flickering across your memories in a blaze of excitement. A pool of warmth spreads through your mind as she settles on the memory of you commanding the goblins to die. Oh, I like you. That was inventive and efficient. Your confidence is delicious. I can see why the Absolute might be hungry to dig deeper into that mind of yours. I certainly am. She parts the folds of your mind again, touching your wants and hopes, tasting them. Every emotion soaks into her mind's palate, but there is purpose to her exploration. She is searching for proof of your faith. My, my. Your lust for the neck pricker is succulent. I'd like to take a bite out of him myself. Yours is a face I shred in my dreams. One who kicked the steel claw as if I were some stray. I am a champion hunter. When I lick my pelt, I taste blood. Fortunately for you, the slithering vermin I hunt has my attention. For now. You excavate the empty caverns of your useless mind, shoveling, dozing, blasting through the smooth brain. How the kitty cat mewled when your boot stamped upon its tail. You are the black cat crossing the path of the living. The pleasure of the memory dribbles out of your leaking skull into the very air. A memory won at the cost of a piece of your mind. You were in this tower before, that much is sure. A wave of sick familiarity radiates from one barrel amidst the cargo. Tadpoles, sleeping and scarcely aware, but echoing yours a hundredfold. <laughs> There's so many. Enough for an army of mindless slaves. the winged serpent of the Zentarim. It seems their pursuit of profit extends even here. A pattern of blank minds newly born. They carry only a bare shred of memory inherited from something older. A sleep of centuries. The birth and destruction of a settlement above forming only background noise to the dream until something descended down into the darkness and the dreamer awoke. They don't know what they are. Not yet. Unless... 
Yes. We taught them to be something else. Gods, you're beautiful. Us. I still love the sound of that. <laughs> Can't get enough. I'm not surprised. I don't know, but isn't it nice not to know? Uh, uh, you're not a victim, not a target, not just one night it's better to forget. Uh, but then, whatever in the world could you be? Araj Oblodra. Trader in blood and the sanguineous arts. It is a pleasure to stand before a true soul and your pale companion. I'd like to offer my services, if you're willing. <laughs> Please. You think someone in my line of work wouldn't recognize a vampire spawn when they see one? I trade in blood and the potions that can be wrung from it. I'm more than happy to make you one, if you'd honor me with your blood. With one drop, I can brew a rather potent potion for you. The rest, I keep for myself. No idea, but it will be unique to you, your blood essence and the Absolute's blessing intertwined. We can learn exactly what that means together, hmm? Research, naturally. A little experimentation, perhaps. I have an innate curiosity for all things sanguine. Just a little prick and it's all over. Close your eyes. There we are. All of your very best traits. In a bottle. Use it well. Although perhaps there's one more thing we could discuss. Your vampiric friend. Oh, don't worry. We're all friends under the absolute. I won't bite. Oh, I'd prefer if you did. I assume he belongs to you? I'm sure he really believes that. How utterly adorable. Do you have a name, Spawn? Uh, Starion, but, but hold on! Good. Now, Astarian, I've dreamt of being bitten by a vampire since I was a young girl. Uh, I'm sorry, you want to be bitten? To feel your life's blood slipping away. To dance on the edge between life and death. Yes, I want it. I'll even compensate you. A potion of legendary power that forever increases the strength of the one who consumes it. It's not for sale, but it's yours if you bite me. I will have to decline. <laughs> Excuse me? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and you're squandering it. I gave you my answer. Oh, can't you talk some sense into your obstinate charge? I'm sorry, but could you excuse us a moment? Are you actually asking me to do this? Trading me for some... some... some potion? Because there's something wrong with her blood. I can smell it from here. It's rank. That would explain the stench, yes. I've already had enough illithid filth in my head. I don't want it in my stomach as well. I don't have all day, true soul. All right. Uh, thank you. 
It's still a no, I'm afraid. How very disappointing. Thank you. I appreciated that. Your stomach churns around and around. The bile within is unsettled. Each moment brings a new surge. Your companions sleep like blissful lumps of meat. He is so afraid, so, so afraid of everyone. Besides you, who he ought to fear most. You could do so much better, my lord. Harming me will not aid him in the slightest. Nothing will at this point. Your clever mind is penning tragedy as we speak. Your repressed urge yearns to kill. And kill you will. Tonight, the moment you close your eyes, your favorite person will be brutalized. Each man kills the thing he loves. You like him for more than his looks, but he will never believe that. Why not make him a pretty corpse? <laughs> Why not whisper it while you twist a knife? <sighs> or have a love confession be the final words between you? It is my duty to ensure you are making the right decisions, Master. There was much uh, disappointment at your reluctance to kill the little Moon Maiden. You could kill this one deliberately. I'm sure it will be considered a great show of goodwill. The tithe could still be yours. I do not doubt you will act with a decorum befitting one of your rank. A good night, sweet lord. Your companion rests blissfully, without a fear in the world. As your hand approaches his body, it wavers. It longs to close around his throat. Looking for a cuddle. Although, you don't look entirely yourself. What's going on in that head of yours? More horrible than our day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> well, this I have to hear. As you tell your story, fatigue fills your body. Your head swims with the worst headache you've known. <laughs> I'd rather be the only dark power inside your body, if it's all the same to you. You're welcome to try and kill me, of course, but I don't die easily these days. You could have talked to me before things got murderously bad, you know. We are technically in this together. Whatever it is that's controlling you, we can fight it. I know that better than anyone. Suddenly you become drowsy. Your vision blurs and floods with yellow bile. And you faint in a dizzy blur. You are not yourself. All control is gone. This thing won't have you. It won't win. Ah, 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 we ask before we bite. You're cute, you know. In another life, we might have been friends. 
Your hands are raw and bloody as every inkling of your urge yearns you to tear your bindings. Easy now, darling. You've got this. And I've got you. You'd do the same to me. Now just relax. Dawn isn't far off. The night passes sick and sweating, but bloodlessly. You once again inhabit your own mind. Now that you're back with us, we need to have a talk. If anyone understands an internal voice forcing your hand, I do. But that's not who we are now. We make our own choices. And you made the right one last night. You're not alone in this. None of us are. We can even compare notes if you like. I don't hate you, because this is not you. But whatever this is, you will get through it. And I'll be here to make sure you do. Anyway, it's a brand new day. I'm sure we'll find lots of people for you to kill. Good morning. Thank you for not killing me the other night. Are you all right now, or is today a I will wed you with a delicate veil of blood blooming over your white curls kind of day? Excellent. You will let me know the next time you need to be tied up, won't you? Can we? <laughs> I suppose we can. <laughs> Can't get enough. I'm not surprised. <sighs> you are perfect every time. The air stirs in trepidation. You have the ledger. The raven always knows. We have it. Her lies. Her guilt. Madeline reported her friends to a dark justicia and fled when they were butchered. Well, she flees no more. I will be the conduit for Madeline's spirit. I will force her to face trial, and you will be the judge. Make her beg, make her suffer. The Raven was right. We were fated to meet. Break her, my friend. Most thoroughly. Witness. That I was going to be punished. That you'd be the judge. But I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Well now, let's not go throwing stones. Glass houses and all that. But... But this wasn't supposed to happen. I swear! I said it didn't mean nothing. That Ben and Mark were just drunk and whining. 
the Dark Justicia promised she was going to chat with him. She promised! She gave him a dagger each and told him to press it against their stomachs on the count of three to start stabbing and not stop till she said so. She never said stop. I'd do anything to take it back. Anything. You're right. I'm a killer. A monster. I should have... died instead. still shakes. You broke her most thoroughly. Well done. Perhaps. But we both got what we wanted, didn't we? You have done well. Her pain and anguish were sublime. I will treasure it. Here, for your services, should I find another murderer in need of torment, I shall call upon you. Farewell. The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel indeed is an extension of Shah. See how the patient reacts when I but stroke the right nerve. Here it's Comfort hear the very melody of mercy. <laughs> Pray, sister, show us the extent of your beneficence. Stop, stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. You are no sister, but that matters none. Every student is welcome. Absence. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. He's just like Cathedral. Utterly insane. See? What is the light of eyes but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being? If light is the symptom, then darkness is the cure. For in light there is presence, but in darkness there is absence. In light is presence, in darkness, absence. But you, look how the sucker of Shah eludes you. See how painfully present you remain. We do not wish to see you suffer so. Let us cure you. The sisters' blades are bloodied and dull. Only the most measured hand could make a clean incision. Their incisions are as yet still streaked with imprecision. That much I must concede. How to steady their hands, I wonder. I see now. By example, I must edify and quell the light that blinds us.
Come, sisters. Soothe me. me at hide and seek that's him like an echo of thaniel remolded by the curse we need him if we're to put a stop to all of this will you play with me spoil sport i'm not going back i like it here i've made a family for myself i get to play all the time Yes, I do. You can't make me do anything. <laughs> I don't want to play with you anymore. A slippery little bugger, isn't he? He'll be looking for somewhere safe. Somewhere where the shadows are nice and strong. I think I'll enjoy traveling with Halson. Not for his wit or wisdom. He'll just make an excellent shield if we're attacked. Thou hast now a bosom companion. Take care that thou art not distracted on thy quest, seeking the comforts of the flesh. Recall that in time, all becomes dust and bone. As you step into the silent water, a foreign dread travels through you. It curls its way up your leg, squeezing tight. think your day can't get any stranger, you end up traipsing around an impossible-looking shadow dimension. Honestly, just once, could we end up somewhere normal? A tavern, maybe? Or a nice, friendly brothel? I'd take anything at this rate. So, Shadowheart stood up to the Dark Lady. <laughs> I'm almost impressed. I suppose it was only a matter of time until Shah took vengeance. For the Lady of Loss, she does not like losing. Help! Help! You will fall as sure as she. This has only begun. Nine hells is going on! I thought we had him! Nothing to do but follow him and finish the job! The hole yawns back at you, impossibly wide. A single tentacle burrowed through stone. be where they harvest the tadpoles. We're close to the source of the infections. This place brings back the worst memories. It's like being kidnapped all over again. This pod has a different air to its chitinous cavern. Dust and dirt are gathered on the inside. It's broken beyond repair, seemingly by a blunt impact. As if whoever was inside threw themselves against it in an effort to break out. 
Your brain hurls an image towards you, your own head, blood gushing down in front of your eyes. Oh yes, that's yours all right. Even stale, I'd recognize that bouquet anywhere. Hmm. your fists on a chamber until half your fingers were broken. How long inside? Days? Months? Lifetimes? The parasite was inserted into your head and your body crammed into a pod long before you were moved to the nautiloid. A laughing woman, taunting you. She betrayed you. Who was she? No. There is no repentance. No release. My debt can never be repaid. He is here. He is watching. He is listening. He is... He is... myself as a banisher of shadows before. <laughs> I was always more of a lurker in, historically. 